Do you want to learn the best way to become a serverless developer? If you do, then this is the video for you. In this video, we're going to be discussing the five steps to becoming a serverless developer in 2022. So let's jump in and look at the five steps. The first step to becoming a serverless developer is having a really strong foundation in your chosen language. Whether that's JavaScript, Python or Go, having that understanding is key. Next, you need to choose the framework that you're going to use. I'm going to recommend either the serverless framework or the AWS CDK. And I'll discuss why I've chosen those two in, uh, later in this video. Once you've chosen your framework of choice, you need to actually start building with it. So step three is building a simple API and following a tutorial. Step four is taking what you've learned in that tutorial and learning a little bit more about that service. So it could be learning the advantages, the disadvantages, the limitations, and where this service is well used. Finally, it's building your own projects using the knowledge that you've learned from the tutorial and the extra research. The first one should be a personal project, something to help you practice what you learned in the tutorial. But after that, going over and doing more projects that use that new skill if possible, in a production workload, that is awesome. So now that you have understood and implemented this new service into your real projects, it's back to looping back up to point three. So pick a new service, whether it's Dynamo, whether it's AppSync or Cognito, learning about that through a tutorial, doing some extra research, and finally implementing that into your own projects. That is the loop of continuously improving your abilities as a serverless developer. So that is the run through of the five steps to becoming a serverless developer. And now we're gonna look at each step individually in more detail to help you become that awesome serverless developer. So we're back onto step one, which is having that solid foundation in your chosen language. At the start, I recommended either JavaScript or TypeScript or Python. The reason I chose those two is because those are probably the most commonly used in companies that are very heavily focused on building production workloads using serverless applications. The other reason that you want to be really strong in your chosen language is that no matter how amazing your architecture is, how many different services you're using, most of the time it comes down to a Lambda executing the business logic that you're trying to implement. If you're not as strong in your chosen language, then the code in that Lambda is not going to be optimized. And that is always going to make for a less stable and a less production ready application. This doesn't mean you need to be a complete wizard in your chosen language, but being very comfortable, if I was to give you a task to sort some data or to perform API calls and transform the response, those are the kind of things that you should be very comfortable with which will help your Lambda code be written more efficiently and also run better. Another advantage is that when you want to move into the more advanced parts of either serverless framework or the CDK, is that because they're written with JavaScript, you can add more complex logic using JavaScript to implement fancy features. For example, in the serverless framework, I wrote a JavaScript file, which would look at all of my Dynamo tables 
and anytime I added a new table to the config, it would automatically add the auto scaling groups to that Dynamo table. So I never forgot about doing that step. So in step two, we move on to actually picking our framework. Now, this is probably gonna be quite controversial, but I would only recommend at the moment picking either the AWS CDK or the serverless framework. The reason I chose these two is that the serverless framework has been around for a very long time and has a really strong community, as well as a lot of companies who are using it in production. It's also, in my opinion, a nice balance of easy to use, but also very powerful if you want to do more complex or advanced features. With the CDK, that is an Amazon product, which is actually newer than the serverless framework and uses classes to create components. There are a lot of different components that are available from AWS and it allows you to create everything that you could create using raw cloud formation, which is actually really powerful. It's probably a little bit more complicated to first learn it, but it's also probably slightly easier when you're doing things more than just an API. So there are loads of other frameworks that people are saying, why not this? So some examples are the AWS Serverless Application Management or AWS SAM or AWS Amplify. And the reason I've not chosen those two is whilst it's very easy to get started and do some relatively simple things, once you want to do more complicated things or you want to have finer control over what is actually being produced, it becomes quite a lot more complicated. And the way they've abstracted that complexity means sometimes you just don't have the control that you want. On the other end of that is something like Terraform. Terraform has its own language and allows you to have complete control over everything that is deployed, but in my opinion, it's a little bit opinionated. It means that you have to do things in a very specific way and you have to know a lot about Terraform to not break it. I've recently done a project where I had to use Terraform and the amount of times I deployed something and there was a parameter missing or there was just something not quite right with the file and it's through a really complicated error that I spent hours trying to debug. It's not the framework that I would choose if I was first learning how to use serverless applications. Finally, there are frameworks such as Webany, and there are many others similar to this. These are very new frameworks which are aiming to simplify the process of creating serverless applications some have their own language, some use JavaScript or Python to allow you to create in a similar way to the CDK. But some of these have advantages like claiming to be cross-platform. But in my opinion, they are both a bit new to dedicate your whole learning resources to as a first framework. This means they've got a smaller community, less people to learn from, and less like plugins and extensions to use, but also they change very, very rapidly. When the serverless framework first came out, it was changing all the time, and there were times where I would build something, and two months later, I'd try and rebuild it, and it changed slightly so that the new version wasn't compatible with what I was trying to do. So for now, at least, I would avoid these unless there is a particular feature in one of them that you absolutely have to try. So with your framework chosen and your strong understanding of your chosen programming language, it's time to start building things. 
So now that you have chosen your framework, as well as having a strong understanding in your chosen language, it's time to actually start building some things. Whenever I'm trying to learn either a new framework or a new service using that framework, I always start with a tutorial wherever possible. This is because if a tutorial has been created well, it will allow you to build that new service, learn about it, and learn how it connects to other parts of your application. And it should all work perfectly. If you try and just go straight to the docs and add some new feature or new service to your application and it doesn't work, you've got to debug it. And often at the very start of a process of learning a new service, Debugging can be quite hard. There might be specific errors that uh, once you know the service, you know, okay, that error means I need to change this. But at the start, you don't have that knowledge. And that's why I always start, the first thing I build is a tutorial. Once the tutorial has been built and I've got a basic understanding of how the service works and how it fits together, I move on to looking into how I can use that in my projects. This normally starts with a little bit of research into the pros and cons of this service, its limitations, and where it actually is really well suited. Doing this allows me to both in the development and in the architecture sections, make sure that I'm using the right service in the right way. For example, with Lambda, if I know that my service is going to be doing a process that might take 40 minutes, Lambda is not going to be a great fit because Lambda has a maximum runtime of 15 minutes. Obviously, you don't have to get into the nitty gritty at this stage, but always making sure that you're knowing about where these new services are applicable and where actually something else might work better is always going to make you a better serverless developer. Once you've got that, it's time to start looking into actually implementing this in your own projects. The first time you implement this into your own projects, I would always recommend having a personal project or building something that isn't part of any production workload. This just means that you can build it, you can tweak it, change it, and if it breaks anything else, it doesn't really matter because it's not under any production work. This just gives you a little bit more freedom to try things out, tweak some parameters and experiment so that you can understand how those things change the functionality of your services. Once you've done this, then it's time to maybe try it out in something that is a little bit more production ready, whether that is a application that you're building just for yourself, or whether it's a SaaS product that you work on, or even better, if you can, if you can find a way to integrate that service that you've learned about into a product that you're doing as part of your job, that is a great way of both getting extra practice with that service, as well as showing your employer that you are getting better you are becoming the serverless developer that they want you to be. Now that we've got to stage five and completed that cycle, we need to pick a new service. So the first service should always be API Gateway and Lambda to build a simple API. And the next time round, you can repeat steps three, four, and five for something like DynamoDB, or Cognito, or AppSync. 
There are loads of AWS services out there and going through those final three stages, so following a tutorial, learning more about the pros, cons, limits and use cases, and then building that into your own projects will help you pick off one service at a time and that is going to increase your tool belt of skills until you're able to build really, really impressive architectures using your serverless framework of choice. So those are the five steps to becoming a serverless developer in 2022. If you've learned something new in this video, then smash that like button as it really helps the channel and helps more people who want to become developers just like yourselves. I also want to do a massive shout out to the supporters of this channel. I have some members on Buy Me A Coffee and people who have donated. So it's a massive thank you to you guys. And if you haven't done already, either check that out or subscribe down here and turn on the bell notification so you get notified next time I upload a YouTube video. Thank you and I'll see you in next video.